Hi, I thought it would be fun to explain a little about what uh, university press editors do and don't do, and especially about what we do here at Duke. Uh, one of the funniest things about editing at a university press is one does very little actual editing. Um, you don't sit through and mark up a manuscript from beginning to end. It's really the job is called acquisitions editors because you're really thinking about what books should compose a list and then trying to convince people to publish those books here uh, rather than somewhere else. Uh, in that way, I sometimes compare it to the A&R person at a record company. You're trying to think about what kinds of things could be hits if they came out uh, further down the line. And the further down the line part is a really interesting challenge of being a university press editor. Most people that I meet or the other editors meet, their books are going to come out two or three or four years away. So just like an A&R person can't listen to, like, the, uh, at the circus and think, oh, I need to sign up somebody who's going to make a song exactly like Britney's song, and then uh, nine months or a year from now have a song that sounds like last year. We can't look at a book in a given discipline or even for the general public and think, what kind of book do wish we wish we had out now? It's always thinking forward. And the challenge is that every one of the disciplines thinks forward in a different way. So if you think about what's happening in anthropology or what's happening in American history or what's happening in Latin American history, each of those has its own kind of histories. And the editor's job is to know where those things are going. So I sometimes think it's like an old fashioned video game where you're driving and the landscape is changing and you're trying to go faster and faster and stay on the road, you're always looking at this moving landscape and trying to track where it will be and where the books that you publish three or four years from now will land and what impact they will make. And for Duke, where we try and be a kind of cutting edge press to think ahead of where the fields are, to try and be leading the fields rather than kind of following them uh, at, a, at a safe distance, then that's even more of a challenge. And to me, that's the most exciting part of the job. Because often, it's younger people who are putting together different discourses for the first time, uh, thinking about how the questions of their field could be done in a different way, and really trying to plot like what will be a kind of new terrain for that field to be on three or four years from now. And very often, you have the gratifying feeling of like something you saw coming uh, becomes the dominant thing in the field, becomes so taken for granted that it's everything. Uh, when my colleague uh, Reynold Smith started the New Americanist series with Donald Pease in the early 90s, it was a perceived need that American studies needed to change. It needed a different point of view. It needed to see America as an empire in a different way. And uh, to take account of different American histories rather than a single one. Uh, Five or eight years later, that had become the dominant thing in the field. There were, you know, the books that had been seemed really innovative and against the grain at the beginning had become very mainstream. So often there's a very quick history of something you're signing up ahead of time becoming the, the very normal thing. Um, and then you have to be wondering, well, what's going to be next? Uh, one of the particular things about Duke that I think is distinctive is most of us are responsible for several fields at once. The press is a very interdisciplinary press. We try and think about how each book will have multiple audiences. We don't try and put them in narrow silos. And the editors have to operate the same way. At some presses, there's a history editor or a political science editor. And then all they think about is the one discipline on its own grounds. What we're trying to do is always think, how will these things fit our list in general? And how will they be received by audiences in different fields? Um, and then beyond that, of course, we're trying to think who might be interested in the books outside of the academy, which is a very different challenge, a very different kind of writing, and very different kinds of set of audience assumptions. So ideally, you're looking for something, or I am, that will have an impact outside of the academy that will be read by people interested in the subject and could be changing a field and could be received in this um, impactful way. 
that's a big challenge, and often the same books don't do each thing. But when all these come together, that's a, that's a really fabulous thing. So how do we find books like this? Um, one of the interesting things about looking for books that are more cutting edge, it's less obvious where to go. I sometimes envy my colleagues who look for just the top person in the central part of a very established and field that's moving very slowly, because it's a lot easier to see where those people are and to just spend a lot of time with them over a period of years. If you're really looking to be a kind of cutting edge, theoretically led press, and you're looking for where questions are being answered, then you have to move from field to field, you have to meet a lot of younger people, and you have to stay up with the senior people who might well have also the considered answers to those questions. The good part is it's somewhat self-selecting. Duke has a very strong profile. Lots of people send in manuscripts or proposals or emails uh, offering us things. And I have to turn down about 30 things a week just to stay even with what I can do, which is probably more books than an editor should really be doing. Um, the other editors also turn down a whole bunch of things. Um, but we get the books that we publish from a whole range of sources, including people writing completely out of the blue. Uh, we have authors in Australia or South Africa or in uh, Asia who I've never met. Then there are people that I've taken out for coffee or lunch for years and years and years and thought, hmm, never going to get a book for them. And then they come through with a really important book. So there's a kind of range from uh, people we meet going to academic meetings, uh, people we meet through other connections of authors at the press, um, and reading and following things online. Um, I think the most valuable thing is traveling, getting out of the office, hearing what kinds of discussions are going on in different places, and then being able to kind of network through people, hear that gem of an idea that makes you think, oh, this is really a different way of thinking. This could really change people's ideas if they like saw this person's work. And then being in a position to actually make that happen. There's a certain kind of thing I value about this that's kind of like midwifery, where you recognize that here's this valuable thing and you help to bring it in the world. And to sh through the review process, through our design, through what I can do giving advice as an editor on how the book should be structured, then all those things help bring it into the world. And that's where I feel like I make the biggest contribution.